Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with uh, our chainsaw model, and we're going to start with some UV basics. So, UVing is, is, is not too complex, but you just have to follow some pretty strict guidelines for things. And the simplest way to sort of understand how UVing works is you got to make sure everything's nicely unwrapped and straight, and generally the orientation of your UVs. So what goes up needs to be orientated up and what goes left and right needs to be orientated left and right for like a directional textures. But I'll explain that a bit more. So we're actually gonna start with this piece. So I'm just gonna control one. And because we didn't uh, UV any of this as we went along, um, it's probably gonna be an absolute mess. Um, but usually, if I was doing this in a production sort of environment, I would always UV as I go along so I don't end up with a huge sort of UVing task at the end. But because we're doing this um, this tutorial series, I want to sort of just get the UVs out of the way in one chunk instead of dragging it along. Cool. So if you haven't used UVs before or tried them, basically it's just giving some mapping properties to the geometry. So if we go up to, so make sure you're in your modeling and select UV. And we can go to UV Editor. And this is the classic thing that you'll see for someone that's never done UVs before. So basically, this is just started off from probably the, the cube that we started with. And it's got all the extrudes layered on top. And this is bad. So you never want this, ever. And you can see, as we look in our perspective, we can see all the seams. And what we can do as well, just for visual, if we turn on the checkerboard, go to shading, turn. Ooh. Uh, that has gone green because it has no shader applied anymore. So let's put the Lambert back on. So now, if we just look at the checkerboard, we can see if we apply the texture to this, it's our UV toolkit there. Oh, let's actually, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to stick that on my toolbar there. So now that's always there. You can now see if we stick a texture on there, that's probably what it will look like and it will look awful. So what a lot of people tend to always do is it's quite easy to be quite lazy. They go create automatic. And would you believe it? It's done a actually an all right job on this, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting too much of it to do. But it has split things up, not necessarily. Well, it's actually done, to be honest, it's done a pretty decent job apart from I don't want uh, this orientation. So if we look, we've got some split. If we right click and add UV shell, that was a very poor example of uh, how automatic UVing is bad because it actually did a really good job. So, okay, so there's one way if that works and obviously we need to, it's done a, a, a really good job actually, um, quite shocked. But we've got all these other bits here. And they're kind of, everything here is orientated in a way that I don't really want it. Because, like I said at the beginning, we need to make sure things are going in the right direction. And this will help with texturing a lot because this is going to be steel. So there's going to be some slight uh, sort of grain or whatever the sort of, you know, like stainless steel, you've got a very th fine sort of grain in it. And that generally goes when you're from left to right. If you're building something, you would never cut it and it's sort of grains down there. So we need to make sure that we're consistent with our directional flow of textures. So I always like to think if I'm having things that have got textures that go from, that's got like some sort of directional flow, I always go from left to right. So we can easily fix this by going to our toolkit, selecting transform. We can roll down and we can rotate this. And now you can see that it's rotated everything around. The next thing we need to do is lay this out. And you do have some tools which work quite well. We can 
select layout and see how that does it. And it's done a pretty good job at laying things out, but I feel like I could do a better job manually. And also we need to figure out our textile density, which is basically how much uh, uh, sort of pixel space each of our UVs are going to take up. So obviously if there's a limited amount unless we chop this up, but I think for this case it's quite a lot of uh, textile density because we've got much bigger bits than this. So what we can do, we can actually scale this down. What I want to do, I just want to get the... I can select here where it says textile density pixel per unit. I'm just going to leave this as it is because I'm probably going to... Because we're working in procedural, we're going to make sure everything's all the same sort of texture um, density. So I'm going to probably be working out what's the most optimal density size for all of this. Because don't forget, we've still got lots to fit in, and we can have quite a few UDIMs, but we don't we don't want like hundreds of UDIMs because a lot of these are small pieces. So I'm actually gonna select these two. And if I go to my edge. Actually, double select, uh, double click, and select this, but it selects the whole edge loop. And I probably don't want to do that. I'm just going to select the edge. Then I can go to sew, just sew, and that's obviously made it do something really funny here. So it's stretched over. So I can go to my UV shell, select that. Then I can go to modify and unfold. So now this has unfolded the the UV. So now it's it's now sewn together and it's unwrapped. We can select orient and that will orientate it flat. And for this case, automatic has worked actually all right. It's not done a, a, that bad of a job. Um, it's probably because it's quite a simple shape. So, but the thing is with automatic weaving, it makes, if you have more smaller parts, it will make more of this. Um, sort of like broken up bits, which these could actually be one UV. So I'm just going to double click on that, deselect that, Let's sew that again. Let's select that. And so you can see it's stretched again. I'm just going to go to modify and fold. I'm just going to rotate this round and orient so now it's perfectly flat. So now we've kind of joined those together because they were unnecessarily split up. And we want to make the least amount of seams. So I'm just going to bring this down here. I'm just going to turn this off. So we've stoned this one and we've got I'm quite happy with that. And then we can probably. Where's this one? Effect. Because we're at the front, we see at the tip of this, I'm gonna try and make sure I've got no seams on the front. So select these edges. And it's like so. And you can press Control U to, to unfold, or you can go to Modify and Unfold. But we're just going to be most of this is going to be doing the same thing, and we just want to make sure that we've got nice UVs. So I'm just going to sew and Control U. I'm just going to orientate that. Let's orientate shell so it's flat. So now I've got this quite a long piece of uh, UV here, and this is the bit that goes all the way around. And because we see this at the front, I kind of don't really want seams on there. Not that it's probably going to make a huge amount of difference, especially with tried planar projection. So now we've got these two bits here, which I believe are just the end bits. And what we can do, we can just add it 
add that to either end of here. So, ooh, make sure we deselect. So, on that side, then I'll just do the same on the other side. And you can press G to repeat command. I'm just going to select this and go Control E. Then I'll select Orientate Shells because I can rotate that and get it close and it will sort of figure itself out. Cool, so albeit the we did a auto sort of UV on the first bit, we fixed these smaller bits. So now if we look at our checkerboard, because we've unfolded this now, these are going to be different textile densities. So if we go get, we can see they're slightly different. This one's quite large, so we need to make sure that these are all the same. So I'm just going to get, and I'm going to, at the moment, I'm going to use this as a base base uh, density. So I'm just going to select these, select set. So now these are all the same. So now if I select get on there, that's the same. Cool. So now I'm just going to organize this down at the bottom. And what we want to do, whilst we're doing this, I haven't mentioned it, but we kind of want to make sure that we are organ. We, well, we don't have to, but I like to sort of organize our UVs in sort of types of what type of material it will be. So at the moment, we can imagine that this is all going to be metal in here, but we can shift these all around. It doesn't matter so much. Cool, so we've successfully UV'd that first piece. So if we just minimize that, and if we press three, you should have something like this. And I'm flipping between smooth and, what, well, one and three, smooth and not smoothed. And we can see we've got, this is actually upside down. So let's go bring that back. So upside down. So we need to make sure that's the right way up. Cool, so that's correct. And obviously if this was joined, that would actually be upside down. So I'm not too fussed about the inside of that at the moment because we're not really going to see very much of it. So we might actually reduce the amount of uh, polygons in here, but I'm not too worried about this for now. In fact, the first thing that I actually want to do is just apply Lambert to my entire chainsaw, just so it's not green. And like now I've selected it, you can see how bad our UVs are. So we're going to go through and make them all nice. And we'll just do this. So we'll do right bar. Just going to isolate that. And what I like to do, once I've UV'd a section, I'm just going to select all the ones that I'm happy with. And you need to remember that you do this because with UVing, you can own, you want to make sure that all your UVs are in this, in this area. So they can be anywhere in here. Obviously not any parts there has to be no further than 10. You can't have it any further than that. And you do not want to be down here or behind here. UV, especially when you're working with UDIMs, you need to make sure that you're in all of this space. So you have you have all this to use basically. So let's put that back. So I'm going to use the sort of lower ones as a waiting room for my UVs. It's everyone has different methods. 
um, it just saves me because all this stuff's going to be at the first UV. So what I mean by waiting room, I'm just going to put it down here and just get it out of the way. So I'm going to select move and I can put one. Now if I press down, that moves this whole, this moves it down one UV space. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we're going to continue UVing the rest of it until it's all done. A lot of it's going to be duplicated, but yeah, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.